morning. My name is Joshua Tierney. I'm uh, one of the ERCP and pancreatic obliterate uh, surgery fellows at University of Louisville. It's an honor to present our research this morning. We have nothing to disclose. Uh, ERCP has a few well-known complications occurring in anywhere from 4 to 6% of patients. The majority of that is pancreatitis, is also bleeding and perforation. But then there's the often forgotten or underrepresented, underrepresented, at least in the literature, complication of cholangitis that we're going to talk about today. Post-ERCP, cholangitis can occur either early or late. The, the uh, early cholangitis is extremely rare, and it usually happens in a particular situation where you can't achieve biliary drainage uh, after performing cholangiography. This can occur when you have tight strictures or complex hyalur strictures, and you're unable to drain all segments of the liver. Late cholangitis occurs from biliary obstruction due to stent occlusion, and this is going to be the focus of our study. So both plastic stents and metal stents can become obstructed. The metal stents become obstructed uh, infrequently, but it is, but it but we do see it occasionally. And uh, there's only a subset of these patients that go on to uh, develop cholangitis after stent obstruction. And, and um, the goal is to prevent that. And so you need to have an understanding of when to remove or exchange these stents. So the plastic stents last around three months. We usually try to change our stents every two months just to, to be sure. But there are people who, who occlude those prior to that or who you know, miss their follow-up appointment to get their, their uh, repeat ERCP. And then the metal stents last uh, much longer. And usually we're placing those um, for malignancy. And, um, and as I'll show in my data, they uh, really don't ever need to be changed in some of those patients who um, are near the end of the course of their, their disease. The objective of our study was to identify risk factors that were associated with stent occlusion and cholangitis following stenting. So this is a retrospective re review of what the ERCPs performed from 2008 to 2016 uh, at the University of Louisville by two surgeons. There were a total of 3,648 ERCPs performed during this, that period. 431 patients were identified who had undergone multiple ERCPs, and this was our study population. The patient data was collected for each procedure with the vitals and labs and um, other dem demographic information. And uh, then the, each operative report was reviewed to identify uh, those patients who had undergone repeat ERCP for the purpose or for the indication of, um, of stent occlusion with cholangitis. So we compared age, gender, labs, um, the primary diagnosis, and then some procedural related factors such as the type of stent which was placed, a plastic versus met metallic, the size of the stent, um, location of the stent, pancreatic versus biliary, and the number of stents that were placed on the index procedure. Um, for the univariate analysis, we used a U-test and the Fisher's exact test to compare the two groups. And then we used multivariate logistic regression to identify independent risk factors for the development of cholangitis. As mentioned, there was 431 patients who met the inclusion criteria. 57% were female. The average age was 57. And there was 57 who uh, we identified as having uh, stent occlusion and cholangitis, which was about 13.2% of, of all the patients. 370 four patients did not develop cholangitis and were used as a control group. As you can see here, um, there were a few uh, significant differences between the two groups. One was uh, the cholangitis group was uh, older. Uh, they had elevated white count, elevated bilirubin, elevated LFTs as you would expect in uh, the cholangitis group, and then a lower albumin. Also, they were noted to have the diagnosis of either a bowel duct stricture or cancer. Uh, more significant. And uh, the procedural characteristics were that they either had a biliary duct stent placed. There was actually no patients who had only a pancreatic duct stent placed that, who developed cholangitis. And then um, they were more likely also to have multiple biliary duct stent, bile duct stents placed at the index procedure. And then uh, notable here is in that metallic stent row, there was only a 
um, 13 patients who had a repeat ERCP after a metallic stent placement, meaning that it's extraordinarily rare for a patient with a metallic stent to develop, to develop cholangitis. And uh, some of the independent risk factors, we identified three of them. Two of them were patient factors, so in the multivariate analysis, uh, low albumin and cancer as a primary diagnosis were um, two of the factors with uh, that increased your odds of developing cholangitis, which were significant. And then in the procedural related factors, the number of biliary stents placed was uh, also significant. So this is usually two stents that, that are placed at that time, and it's for, usually for a stricture, either a hyalur stricture where you want to drain both sides of the liver or a distal stricture that you're trying to dilate in, or the patient has a gallbladder and you're worried about putting a metallic stent and causing cholecystitis. This is uh, just a graphical representation of those last two slides uh, showing the odds ratios uh, with the con confidence intervals uh, and their sig significance uh, for the three uh, risk factors for post ERCP cholangitis. So in conclusion, uh, malignancy appears to be one of the driving forces of a process that increases the risk of post ERCP cholangitis. So you have the, with malignancy, you have the requirement of having long-term stent placement. Uh, sometimes you need multiple stents to be placed, and a lot of these patients are malnourished with low albumin. Uh, biliary stenting for other reasons, like cholidocolithiasis or benign strictures, was not associated with increased risk of cholangitis. And some of the clinical applications that we draw from these conclusions is that patients with these risk factors should be closely monitored their LFTs and um, scheduled for short interval prophylactic stent exchanges if you have plastic stents in place. And then always considering placing a metal stent when someone has a malignancy that when it's anatomically feasible, um, which really is sort of standard at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was excellent. Question from the audience. Uh, Adnan Alsady from Seattle, well presented. Thank you for presenting your, your data. I have a couple points. How did you account for uh, patients who undergo, who had metal stents and then go on to resection? Because often the resection happens be with before the nine month break mark when they have cholangitis. Right. Second, often it's chemotherapy increases the risk of cholangitis with stents. That's what we found anyway. Did you see that? And then lastly, were your stents covered or non covered? Uh, we typically use uh, covered or partially covered stents. Um, very rarely, only in um, hyalur strictures that you're worried about blocking off the um, one side of the, you know, the one segment of the liver, would you use, do we use the uncovered stents? Um, and so the patients who went on to malignancy, or went on to resection, uh, weren't, weren't included in our analysis. So uh, we use that, those mult, the second and third ERCP as, basically a marker for those patients who were developing cholangitis as, as our, um, for our study group. So we didn't, we didn't look at those patients who developed cholangitis after, after resection. Did you see any association with chemotherapy being given with cholangitis or not? Uh, no, and, and this, a majority of those patients, as we showed, there was only 13, we put in a lot more metal stents than just 13 over that eight year period. So there's very, um, there's a lot of patients with malignancy who are getting those metal stents placed and having chemotherapy who, who aren't developing cholangitis, so. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, the clinic question. Um, you give antibiotics routinely, right? When uh, you do your RCP? No, we don't. No? No. So would Select, this study lead you to, in certain subgroups, I advise antibiotics prior to the RCP? Did it change your practice pattern because of these results? Or? The, uh, the subgroup where we, where we do give antibiotics is uh, for hyalur strictures that we're um, concerned we won't achieve uh, drainage to all segments of the liver. And the, the change in practice that, um, that we've made uh, through this data is, is close monitoring and frequent stent exchanges when we use plastic stents. So neither in the control emergency. nor in the, thing, in, in the two groups, they are not going to receive antibiotics pre-procedure. Pre Correct. Okay. Thank you. One question. For the uncovered stents, uh, you use them high in the biliary tree to avoid side uh, branch blockage. Do you use the uncovered stents for any other reason? Um, typically, no. The, the covered stents ha have 
work really good for us and we really haven't seen many problems with migration. Um, the one issue that we do run into is someone whose gallbladder is in situ, uh, blockage of the cystic duct can be a problem. Mm -hmm. And those patients are the ones we typically will put a side-by-side -side plastic stent in. Um, but we don't. We haven't used the uncovered metal stents uh, for for many indications at this point. And these are patients who, in whom you will not be taking the gallbladder out in the near future. Correct. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.